All right, folks, in this video, we're gonna go anchoring down on some channel ledges for some blue catfish and maybe even a flathead. All right, folks, the strategy here is pretty simple. Find some channel edges that are fairly steep and are holding some catfish or some bait fish. Uh, the reason for this is, uh, under the conditions that I was in on this particular day, we'd had a major temperature drop. It was early spring, it had been fairly warm, and the temperatures plummeted due to a front that passed through. Uh, we'd had an influx of water, we'd had some winds, we'd had some cold temperatures, water temperature dropped about eight or nine degrees. So my feeling was that these fish were gonna be hugged up to structure, and that's where I needed to be fishing. We got one that just went over on one of the Carolina rigs I had on the bottom. I wanted to test out. I wanted to test out these sinker slides I got from Rig Wrap. Today's a good day to do it. I've got about half the baits on Santee style rigs and about half of them on Carolina rigs just laid on the bottom. Seeing which ones produces the fish here in this river current. It varies. Some days they want them on the bottom, some days they like them better suspended. Got a little bit of current this morning. Water's dingy and muddy from some of the recent rains. Bluebird skies. Wind's supposed to be blowing good later. Old big cat fever rod making the battle easy here in this current. Yes. He oh, he's barely hooked. He'll probably pop off, folks. Let you get a shot of him here. This is where that rod tip comes in handy. Right, I'm going in for the kill. Going in for the kill. Yes. I actually think he's hooked better than I thought he was. Just looked like he was barely hit. Still, though, that's where having a forgiving tip, monofilament line, keep you from losing fish in situations like that. That's a good one. First male I've had in a while. Good fish. Nice one. Okay. Almost 13, 12 pounds. Good fish. Let's get him back alive. He's got some spawning to do. Got these new sinker slides from Rig Wrap on here. These, uh, if you haven't seen these things, I got a video up on them. They're actually the only sinker slide that I know of that is removable. It's got a little upper chamber. You pop it down out of it if you want to take it off. You know, most of these things, when they're on, they're on for the trip. And with these, you can actually take them off, which is pretty cool. And uh, they go back on just as easy. You just basically thread your lines through there. Not hard. As I say, it's so easy my 11-year-old can do it. And it's back on there. So it's cool. You can add sinkers. Uh, if you get out here, and if I would have got in here and said, man, there's more current than I thought, I don't have to reel in and untie everything. I can actually put another sinker on a sinker slide and just send it down the line to help keep the uh, bait on the bottom. Now luckily on this day it wasn't that windy. I was able to anchor where I wanted to keep the boat in position and uh, I chose to anchor down instead of doing any drifting or dragging. Uh, I had a little bit of water uh, moving. Uh, there was a water release from the dam that day. So uh, it was a pretty good combination of things to come together and I felt confident I could put some decent fish in the boat. Okay, I've got one going. Is he there? Is he there? Yep, he's there. like a decent fish. Well, I don't know. He's coming up the boat now. If you wonder what that kick's for, if they come running right at the boat when I'm anchored up shallow, I'll kick it. Sometimes it'll get them to turn away and go the other way. Just kind of helps eliminate the uh, anchor rope dance. Ooh. 
looks like a bigger fish. Uh, this may require. This is gonna take a net. I seen the line going in the water in one place, and back behind it, I seen the tail come out. This might be a good fish. Not super huge, but I think I better net him. In the net. Just don't ever do what I just did. I netted that fish tail first. The only reason I did that is because he was floating back downstream with the current. It's a bad idea. You get a net, especially on a big fish, in that in that thing first. His tail feels it. He's going to hit and he'll swim out of the net, and uh, you may lose him, especially if your line or sink or anything gets hung up in the net. Net him head first. Thanks. Good looking fish. <clears throat> Nice male, getting ready for some loving. Good fish. Well, on this setup, I had eight rods out. Four of them were Carolina rigs on the bottom, and the other four were uh, Santee style rigs, so the bait was actually suspended up off the bottom. Yeah, I just got that last fish weighed. I heard a line ripping. It was this one, another one set up on the bottom keying on these bottom baits better than the uh, suspended ones for some reason. Another decent fish. A lot of times in early spring, you don't need to be fishing really, really early. As a matter of fact, sometimes later in the day is better, especially if you're fishing shallow. Uh, as the water warms up, fish will pull up in there. But on this particular day, the reason I was out there so early was because I figured they would be releasing water for peak electrical demand. I took that gamble because it was so cold, got out there before sunrise, and the gamble paid off. Got one doing a hit and run right there. There we go. <laughs> good bend, good bend. Let's see where he's at, getting him lined up in between all these lines I got out. I'm on top. So line back, get him turned this way better fish. I have to go to the other side of the boat. He's trying to go deep. And that's a good thing. Get him away from the anchor. It's like a male. It's got a lot of color. Try to bogey this thing, probably a bad idea. Got him. Good looking male right there. Some good dark colors, got some bite marks on him. It's a good looking fish. Well, this last fish fooled me because when that rod went over, it bit just like a blue. Uh-oh, looks like Pinky's going over. Oh. Still got some water moving. It's getting a little muddier. I get sucking in some of the stuff from some of the adjacent creeks. Happy with the bite though. The gamble to anchor on these ledges paid off today. That was my calculation was that the water temperature's dropping with these cold temps we've had that these fish would hug up the structure. And they have. But once it started coming to the surface, I saw that color. 
guess what we have? He just came up. I just saw him. Guess what we have? Guess what we have? Oh, Mr. Flatty. Mr. Flathead. He came up to the top and made his traditional flathead dive. He is a nice little one. Little boy. Looked really good. I'm going in cowboy. <laughs> well, he ain't my first flathead of the year. It's the first one that I've caught in April. That's a little flathead. Oh, he biting my hand. They, the good thing about flatheads, they don't have a lot of bite pressure. But once you're in their mouth, you ain't getting out. Look at that thing. Arr, arr, arr. You can see my face through his gills. Great fish. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Here's some more videos that I think you'll like. And if you like the channel, please hit subscribe and also hit that bell symbol so you'll be notified when new videos are up. We look forward to seeing you on the water.